Watson was born Margaret Jean Harmon and grew up in the small town of Welch, West Virginia, in the Appalachian Mountains. She was the youngest of eight children and was surrounded by an ex extended family community environment. Jean Watson graduated from Welch High School in 1958. She originally intended to go to college for a degree in English literature, but switched her major to nursing when her father passed away during her junior year of high school. From 1958 to 1961, she attended Lewis Gale School of Nursing in Roanoke, Virginia, getting her RN. From 1962 to 1964, she obtained her BSN at the University of Colorado in Boulder, Colorado. From 1964 to 1966, Jean earned her master's in psychiatric mental health nursing with a minor in psychology from the University of Colorado Medical Center in Denver, Colorado. In 1969, she went back to school and in 1970 completed her graduate study of social and clinical psychology from the University of Colorado Graduate School in Boulder, Colorado. And in 1973, she completed her degree with a PhD in educational psychology and counseling from the University of Colorado in Boulder, Colorado. Jean Watson graduated in 1961 and then married her husband, Douglas. They decided to move to Colorado where Douglas was from. She had two daughters, one in 1963 and one in 1967. In 1997, Watson had an accident where she lost her left eye. And a year later, she lost her husband of 37 years. Watson had the opportunity of putting to practice her own theory. Watson stated, Attempting to integrate these wounds into my life and work. One of the gifts through the suffering was the privilege of experiencing and receiving my own theory through the care for my husband and loving nurse friends and colleagues. Let's talk about the career of Jean Watson. Dr. Watson is a distinguished professor and Dean Emerita at the University of Colorado in Denver. She held the nation's first endowed chair in caring science for 16 years at the College of Nursing and Schultz Medical Center. She is a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing and a founder of the original Center for Human Caring in Colorado. She was once president of the National League for Nursing and founding member of the International Association in Human Caring and International Caritas Consortium. Dr. Watson spends her days as the founder and director of her nonprofit foundation, which she titled the Watson Karen Science Institute. Organizations all over the world, from Dublin to Peru to China, have asked her to visit and speak to them about her philosophy. She even visited the Valley of the Sun. The Arizona Nurses Association hosted a luncheon for her in May of last year. Let's take a closer look at what she spoke about. She spoke about her human caring science and theory of human caring. These theories were created in the late 70s and early 80s. As it relates to nursing, most nurses and lay people routinely associate caring with nursing, yet she had no idea that through her articulation of her ideas that she would contribute to our profession a theory by which to educate and practice by. She merely wanted to express the thoughts and beliefs that she held on the subject. The act of caring can influence the nurse, the patient, as well as those around them. Let's hear this from Jean. And it is that caring moment that actually can be a critical turning point in my life, in your life, and in another person's life, as we touch another person's humanity. Nursing is concerned with promoting health, preventing illness, caring for the sick, and restoring health. It focuses on the health promotion as well as the treatment of diseases. According to Watson, caring is central to the nursing practice and promotes health better than a simple medical cure. Since her theory is best understood as a moral and philosophical basis for nursing, she notes that her theory is as much an art as it is a science. The melding of scientific theory and the openness of the art of communication, compassion, and being present to assist in the health and healing of the individual. Jean Watson's goal was to simplify human care in nursing, to preserve the concept of the person in our science, and to create a better contribution to our society. Caring should become before curing. Caring is a choice that a nurse can make in each interaction, and this should be the pinnacle of the patient-nurse experience. This preserves the patient's dignity now, and health. to prepare ourselves for such an eternal now, in a caring moment, we have to cultivate a consciousness, an intentionality, and a practice energetically 
from our heart and from our daily actions in our world in order to allow for this caring moment to be healing for ourselves and for another. Jean's caring theory suggests that the needs of the human are more important than the administrative constraints that currently exist. Can you imagine the type of care that patients would receive without the worry of insurance reimbursement? Caring can be effectively demonstrated and practiced only interpersonally. Caring consists of curative factors that result in the satisfaction of meeting certain human needs. Effective caring promotes health and individual or family growth. Caring responses accept a person not only as he or she is now, but what he or she may become. A caring environment is one that offers the development of potential while allowing the person to choose the best action for himself or herself at a given point in time. Caring is more healthogenic than is curing. A science of caring is complementary to the science of curing. The practice of caring is central to nursing. Jean has developed three lenses by which to consider the environment of the patient. Three lenses by which to view the act of caring. The patient score, the coworker score, and the self score. First let's see a non-caring nurse, and then we will see a nurse that shows caring. Hi, Heidi. How are you doing? I'm fine. I'm okay. Okay, well, I'm going to come. Uh, I'm going to take you down to get a CT scan oh. for your fall. Is that where I go in, like, a tube and it's, like, really Yeah, the tube. Tight. That's what you go into. Yeah, it's for your head. It, it's fine. Isn't it? Is it? Is it the one, like, with really loud noises and stuff? Oh, and I mean, they're not that loud. How long? Seriously. How long does it take? Mm, ten minutes, I think. I'm not really sure, to be honest. Okay. All right, I'll be right back, okay? When you got it. Sir, you hear me? Two, three, four, 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 four,